Hey everyone, today uh, we want to give you five tricks, five tricks that can really help you get amazing vegetables in your garden. So the first thing is the importance of having super nice seed beds to plant into either direct seeding or transplanting and we're using different tools to get there. Uh, these tools are, you know, they're not tractor mounted so they're hand tools that could be operated in a market garden or in a home garden. So we're talking about making sure that, you know, the beds are loose and deep we use a broad fork for that that's like the 101 of having great harvest is making sure that you have deep loose soils and we use a broad fork for that and then making sure that the amendments the compost is mixed into the top inch we can use a tilter for that we can use a wheel hoe we can use a walk behind tractor on bigger scale and just raking everything clean with a rake at the end makes level and firm seed bed which has some depth and that's really the trick and then we'll mark our rows really nice so that we'll have a perfect grid and then we can plant uh, different seedlings according to spacing we're using bio-intensive spacings or we're using other tools to direct seed the crop specifically and we're using hand push seeders uh, they're very very good push seeders they're they're you know they're simple but they're sophisticated in how they can singulate the seeds making sure that you have the perfect spacing is also super super important so we have different dibblers that we use but we can also use just a rake uh, with some tubing to mark the rows sideways and lengthways that gives you the gridlock all in all it's really important to make sure that you have those clear spacing to have perfect density for your crops the second trick that we use is to standardize things on the farm. So first of all, you want to work with units that are beds. So you'll work with 30 inch beds and 18 inch pathways. You see it, that's 18 inch here. And that allows you to be able to go over, hop over your beds and only use the bed uh, to plant and the aisles to circulate. So you're compacting the aisles and you're never compacting your bed. And so the bed becomes a unit of measure on the farm. You can calculate all your inputs. It's really easy, especially if they're all the same size. So having beds that are all 25 feet, 50 feet, 100 foot, depending on the size of the garden, will make it so that all your material, your row cover, your insect net, your irrigation lines, all the material is versatile. You can use it wherever you need it because you all have beds of the same size. Standardizing also will help you calculate your amounts and figure out your spacing. So no, it's the same concept of square foot gardening, but it's even easier because now you have, you know, on all your beds, you'll know the exact amount of lettuce that need to be transplanted. You can also easily calculate your amendments you know, how many wheelbarrows per bed, that becomes, you know, the measure. So the bed becomes a unit of measure, it's standardized, and then we group them in field blocks. And the field block also becomes easier to manage that way. So we'll have eight, 10, 12, 16 bed in one field block. And that's how you streamline a lot of the information about growing is because you're working with new units of measure that are standardized. So the next trick is really to establish succession planting. What that means is that you have one crop in a bed, let's say you have lettuce, and then you wanna make sure that as soon as the lettuce is harvested, something else is occupying the space. It could be something that you're direct seeding, or it could be something that you're transplanting. But you wanna make sure that all the beds that you have in your garden or in your market garden is fully occupied throughout the whole growing season so you'll have two three four five six successions per bed per year depending on your climate but depending on how smart you are at replacing what was there with something else and we can even under sow things so let's say we could establish 
some uh, broccolis that are transplanted in the garden and seed some carrots at the same time. The carrots will take a long time to germinate and eventually when they get to the size where they need all the space to grow, you know, the broccolis will be harvested. And then that's how you maximize as much your bed space in space and time. So succession planting is really a big trick. That's how you get to grow just more stuff on the same amount of beds that you have in your garden. All right, so the third trick is the difference between weeding and cultivating. So they're very different. So most people that are not, you know, pros, they'll be on their knees, they'll be pulling out weeds with, by hand. We don't do that, we cultivate. So the difference is that you're getting to the weeds before they become weeds. When they're germinating, when they're at the white thread stage or at two leaves, when you're just coming in and just by shaking the soil, you destroy the weeds that are there. And so that makes you a hundred times more efficient. And that's how you're able to keep the whole garden really clean, even if you're using hand tool, because the tool is really what allows you to do the cultivation. And that brings me to my last tip, is that we're using tools to do this. So when we're cultivating, we're again, we're never on our knees, we're using stirrup hose, and you know, we're working with the shafts to really be efficient with, with that tool. But there's all sorts of different tools that we're using. We're using uh, flex tine weeders, or blind weeders we call them, really epic tool. Uh, wheel hose with discs to mount and cultivate between rows, between the crops. Flame weeding is another really cool tool that we have in our toolbox. So there's all sorts of tools and techniques that we use to make the job efficient. And that's really where most of the fun lies. So lastly, I want to give you one last tip. That was really a game changer when I started farming. And it's using black tarps. So. Black tarps, they're silage tarps that they're called. They're UV treated, they'll last for a lifetime. And you'll just cover your bed space uh, with those tarps. And what the tarps, they do is that they, they germinate the dormant weed seeds that are there because under the tarp, it's moist, it's a little bit warmer and it's black, it triggers the germination of these weed seeds that are always there. And so they germinate and then eventually they're pulling up, but there's no light, so they die. So just by leaving these tarps for a few weeks, you're getting rid of some of the weeds and you're also clearing the bed of what was there before. So let's say it was super weedy or messy and you don't want to go in with a tiller or with, you know, just pulling everything by hand, that would be too long. You just tarp it. You tarp it for a couple of weeks Whatever's there will die off, it'll get digested by the earthworms and by the soil web, and you're getting rid of some of the dormant weeds. So you're doing two in one, and that's a game changer. And these are tricks that you can use to help you in your garden. That's how the pros do it, and that's how I do it. And lastly, if you want to learn more about the backbone of our system, permanent raised beds, you can check out this video. I hope you guys are doing well, I'm doing well. I'll see you next time. JM out.